Good. Uh, what do you got for us today? Well, it's been an interesting week on the internet. Uh, on Tuesday, I'm not sure uh, if you guys remember, maybe if you were on the internet then, uh, Amazon broke the internet Tuesday. Oh, my goodness. What happened? And oh. it was absolutely a mess. So, um, for those of you that don't know, Amazon provides a service called Amazon S3, which is essentially a back end storage service for a lot of websites like Netflix, okay. like. Pinterest, Spotify, BuzzFeed, instead of you know having a whole bunch of hard drives, if you will, to store all their data themselves, they hire Amazon okay. uh, and do it via a service. All right. So uh, about 150,000 of the largest websites online rely on this back-end service that never goes down. Well, on, on Tuesday, <laughs> uh, uh, an engineer uh, needed to reset a couple of these servers, which would be fine, mm -hmm. but he made a typo. And mm. when he made the typo, it basically reset the whole East Coast. Uh, including all the machines that run all of those uh, websites. So for over four hours, which is a ridiculously long time in the Internet world, uh, most of these sites didn't work. And wow. uh, I know on Tuesday I was getting lots of calls like, hey, is the Internet acting funky? And it, and it was. And you should have seen the uh, the people on Twitter. They were almost ready to call it a zombie apocalypse. It was, it was, it was pretty bad. <laughs> four hours without Pinterest, people oh were going insane. <laughs> People, what are you going to do about need my to know what, People need to know what I'm having for lunch. What is going on? <laughs> so, I mean, I think this this shows us that how reliant we are on some of this stuff. Yeah. Amazon did put in precautions now that could stop this from happening in the future. But, uh, you know, as great as the cloud is and, and as reliable it is, it's much more reliable than local storage. It's always good to have an offline backup. And I think this is a good kind of reminder of well, that. Well, and it's also like, you know, electricity, right? Even though it's been around forever, sometimes the power goes out. Every once in a while. And you got to harken back to the old days when everybody had to deal with candles. It's just great that it's a typo. The yeah. typo heard around the typo. world. So uh, moving right on, Google... Uh, always in the news, they launched something called YouTube TV, yes. which actually has kind of been rumored for a long time. A $35 a month cable competitor. They basically finally got all the deals with all uh, a lot of the major uh, channels. Uh, so it includes over 40 channels at that point, and you can give up to six users access. So if like you know, everyone in your family can watch different things at different times on their devices under one account. Uh, and it includes things like ESPN, Fox Sports, ABC. It's, uh, it's got a friend of mine asked to have the SEC network, and we checked it does. All right, now hold on a second here. You know that um, uh, Dish has been trying to do something like this. Yes. And DirecTV has been trying to do something like this. So is like Sling. This. There's a company called Sling that does something like Right, all right. Too. So is this better, worse? What are your thoughts uh, on all I, this? I think this is definitely something I'm going to get. I'm very interested in this, being right. a cable cutter. Uh, I think all of those services uh, that you mentioned are pretty interesting. Sling, to me, is the other one that's kind of interesting, being a cable cutter. But right. Dish uh, didn't really interest me. But this one... Uh, well, I think it's I've heard I've heard the other ones are having all sorts of streaming problems and it's not working as well as one would. Hope I, I've and, heard the same thing, right. and you know, with this, you're using YouTube's backend, which is probably the most robust video streaming platform on the right. planet. And so, I think this is going to be really interesting and give people another option. When are they going to roll this out? Uh, I, you know, it's a great question. Uh, I didn't look that up, but uh -huh. I think it's I think it's imminent, like uh, this week. Oh, good. So. All right. And then finally, what's this DNA? Oh, story and this yet? is one of the neatest far. We always like to have a far out story. Yes. Uh, scientists have uh, learned how to store information just like you would on a hard drive on DNA. <laughs> And wow. this is incredible. DNA actually. in your in, on like your skin, actual, or just actual DNA? Your you know, DNA. Like, yeah. And so, what's incredible about this is it's millions and millions of times more compact than traditional storage methods. Of course it is. Uh, its data retention is very high. We can find DNA evidence off skeletons that are thousands of years old and still get information off right. it. To test this, they literally stored an entire operating system like Windows and an entire feature film digitally on DNA and then retrieved it, able to get the data right back, and they were able to do it, uh, which is incredible. Uh, I think, you know, this is one of those things, again, not only is it a lot smaller, uh, but also you think about this, DNA is in a liquid state, not a solid. So, um, so you, you can, don't, it doesn't so have you to be rigid. drink your computer? Well, it just doesn't have to be the same <laughs> rigid formats that we always have. It's one of those kind of interesting uh, bits. For example, uh, one gram of DNA can hold 215 petabytes of information uh to uh, put that in perspective that's uh, a lot that's you know thousand terabytes uh which is a thousand gigabytes <laughs> is that is that more or less than a um than the old floppy disk uh it's it's millions and millions <laughs> and millions of times more funny story i ran into a kid the other day who saw a floppy disk and now, he goes, now the old floppy disk or the hard well, floppy the, the disk? hard the three and a half floppies okay, yeah and he asked me why someone 3d printed the save button <laughs> oh my god 
Michael. Which to me was kind of funny, the but save to him, button. Yeah, because think about it. To him, this kid, this young kid, yeah. he's only seen that floppy image as the save button on things. He's never oh. actually seen the floppy in real life <laughs> oh doing gosh. what it used to do. It's crazy. Generational gap there. Wow, that, that is, is crazy. That is interesting. All right. So. Larry Stunnebeck blows our mind once again. Yes, you Watch have. Watch for that laptop coming on a DNA near you. <laughs> have a good week, Larry. Thanks, guys. Thanks. Seven, we'll tweet this out, too, so you can spread the word on this, too. Uh, 758, Big 550, KTRA.